Hello. Today we're carving, where is he? Where is he? This guy. He's kind of weird. I don't know uh, if I've ever seen, he's very folk arty, which I kind of like. So uh, we're making Cubit. It's uh, what, just a few days away from Valentine's Day. Another opportunity for me to disappoint about the love of my life. And uh, make her a wonderful little gift. Hopefully you can make something like this for your loved one your kids or whatever. Uh, anyway, it's a bit of a long one, but painting, everything is covered in this, so hope you enjoy. All right, let's get started on this one. So this is again, as I mentioned uh, in previous videos, uh, my kind of typical go-to at this point, which is uh, a, a two by two that's cut in half diagonally, and it's about five inches long. In this case, we probably won't use the entire length of the piece of wood. It's only gonna come up to about Oh, let's see, probably, yeah, three and a quarter, three, three and three quarters inches of the whole length. So if you have a three and three quarter inches block, that'll work. I'm going to leave a little extra material down here for me to grab onto and uh, cut it off later or uh, knife it off depending. And uh, anyway, so the pattern for this is just a little drawing that I did based on some uh, very simple uh, Cupid uh, carvings that I found online. So uh, you can find that pattern. Um, online if you Google uh, Cupid cartoon. Uh, that's basically uh, the model that I'm using here. I f did a freehand, really rough freehand drawing of one of them. Uh, you could literally just transcribe um, the, the, the files um, and uh, if I can find the, the link, the web link, I'll link it in the uh, description below. Anyway, let's get into this one. So per usual you saw I had my handy uh, tape measure. Tape measure. I always call a ruler a tape measure. Anyway, I have my ruler and I also have uh, my uh, skewed detail knife. Um, this is uh, linked in the description below. Uh, of course, I'm not affiliated with them. I'm not sponsored by them. Uh, I purchased this on my own, so I'm not trying to uh, you know, sell their knives necessarily. Um, I do have an affiliate link, which just means that I, uh, if you purchase something through the link, it gives me, I don't know, like a fraction of a percent, something tiny, but uh, not a big deal, uh, but worth checking out. Uh, this is a really sharp knife, comparable to any of the really high quality custom made knives I have. And I know that sounds crazy, but it's true. So the skewed detail knife is an excellent blade. Uh, this is uh, about an inch and a half, maybe a little longer. Let's check, make sure. Yeah, just about an inch and three quarters in length. And you could really carve this project in a variety of different woods if you wanted to. Uh, I've got some basswood here, of course, uh, per usual, but uh, also um, could use, uh, this is butternut. You could use butternut for this, absolutely. You could use birch. This is birch. Uh, this is spalted birch, so a little, a little bit uh, figur figuratively distracting. It's figured and distracting is what I'm trying to say, and figured refers to the lines. Uh, and then you've got uh, pine, which would also work really well for this. So uh, white pine. So lots of options there. So if you don't necessarily have basswood, poplar would work. Uh, a whole variety of different woods would be fine for this. So keep that in mind as well. All right. So to start, I'm going to uh, take the corners off of the piece of wood um, and just start thinking about uh, narrowing the head as I get to uh, the top of this piece, starting up at the top, moving my way down. So, it is that time of the year, <laughs> and uh, this could make a cute little gift to your loved one, uh, your wife or your girlfriend, husband, even your daughter or son. Be a cute little, cute little carving to give them. Uh, I don't know, or maybe that's weird. Who knows? <laughs> All right. So, pretty good there. To start again, I want to start narrowing the head. So there's this section here. It's probably hard to see my pencil mark right on the, uh, you know, right side or his his uh, left side where I'm going to start to cut away. Just start to narrow in between the head and these uh, these feathers for his wing. And I'll come on the other side and do the same thing. Now this is a pretty sizable uh, project uh, for um, most of you watching. So we're going to carve it quickly. You can always slow it down. You replay things if you need to. Um, keep it just nice and simple. I'm going to 
kind of hold your hand through it so I won't skip parts or you know, you'll, you'll be able to see exactly what's going on but uh, I'm going to work a little bit quickly so keep that in mind as well so don't be surprised. Anyway I hope you're well and I uh, hope you're watching this and you're uh, you know in good spirits and uh, I know things are well here I'm just uh, working on a whole bunch of projects talking with my wife last night about uh, all the things I've got going on and uh, she thinks I need to take a break more often and uh, and just sort of um, have nothing to do because I like to fill my schedule with uh, you know work things and events and friend ha hangout meetups but a little quiet time is probably due so that's what's going on in my end so now I'm just kind of rounding the top of the head and uh, I'm going to put a little indication right at the hair. So that's uh, probably yeah, half an inch from the top of the piece. Creating a V here. You just see that. Like so. It's so just defining where the hair is. And I'm going to come down below that. Gosh, I'm going to say three quarters of an inch. No, actually, that's a full inch from my top cut here. So would that be an inch and a, inch and a half for his chin? We want him to have a big head because he's kind of a, a young child baby like character, like a cherub like character. So that's the way he's going to be. So I'm starting that stop cut an inch and a half from the top of the piece or what, thereabouts. And uh, I'm just starting to make a, a little upward turn like a U to create the, the jaw. I'm not going too hard here. Uh, or rather angling up too much. I just want to keep it a soft angle. So, All right, so I'm going to take a little bit more out from between the head and his arm, which comes off his a little round <laughs> cartoon torso. And that is the beauty of this. Is uh, There's a lot of complicated parts to this carving, um, but uh, it is a cartoon. So if you exaggerate something, make something too long, um, you know, as long as you can try and figure out a way to do it on the other side, right? If you make his arm too long, for instance, make his other arm too long, uh, it'll look fine. It's a cartoon. So there's not a lot of stress uh, on yourself with this project. And that's the kind of project that we want to do. <laughs> it's just something we can do and just chill out. I mean, really use this as a break. Like, maybe my wife will even think of this as me uh, taking some relaxing time. You know, that's the goal of this project. Okay, <laughs> I doubt it though. All right, the bottom of the wings. So coming down, now oh, probably an inch and a half, let's say. Yeah, from the top of the wing to the bottom of the wing. Yeah, about an inch and three quarters. So from uh, from here down, you know, what is that? Probably a couple of inches from the very top of the piece. I'm going to take a little V cut out. And this is going to separate the bottom of the wings, which are barely drawn on there, and the foot. See this foot here? Just going to define that. And I can even kind of come in with the stop cut, like so. You can see there for, the, uh, for his buttocks. Come in like so. And the reason I'm not uh, cutting it all the way here is I want to leave room for the wings. So I can outline, actually, his body. And I'll actually make sure this drawing is a little bit starker so you can see where I'm going with this. I got a little light on the drawing. Okay, there's his body, right? And then, of course, his wings here. Whatever. And, uh, yep, so I'm going to come into his body here, like so, with the blade, come with the outline of his body, like so. And then I'm going to carve towards that to relieve the chip. And the same thing, once again, coming back in. And what I'm doing is I'm separating the body from the feathers of his wings. Same thing with the side of his head. Starting at the ear. Hopefully you can see the little ear that I made about, oh, just at about the halfway mark I start the ear. And it's about a quarter of an inch long. Okay, so I'll come in. And then the head meeting the body. Coming, coming straight in for that kind of stop cut. And cutting the... All right, so you can see now what's happening is I'm taking the body and separating it from the wings.
All right, so per usual, I say this in every video, uh, but I'll say it again. Um, you really should wear a carving glove. Um, many people have hurt themselves. In fact, many people have given up on carving because they stabbed themselves really good and they never wanted to risk it again. And so if you have a carving glove or even a leather glove, um, a kitchen uh, glove, that's what I have uh, floating around here as an example. This is just a uh, cutlery kitchen knife glove. And this is a great, this is a great way of uh, keeping yourself from cutting yourself. The reason I'm not using it is uh, I've been carving for a lot of years, you know, 16 years. And um, I do cut myself occasionally, but it's uh, very rare. And um, I've got fairly good control over the, uh, over the blade that I'm using. So uh, keep that in mind. Even so, uh, a glove is a good idea. I recommend it. So please do wear that glove. All right. So uh, I can take some little V cuts out of this background area to kind of indicate where the feathers are going to be, like so. You can see. Let me see if I can come a little closer. Get that focus. Right. Okay. So little V cuts here. Maybe another one here. I'm keeping them about the same width. Little V cuts there. Just like so. Oh, I bumped my uh, hand right on this corner and cut the whole wing right off. Look at that. <laughs> All right, that's okay. We can uh, we can salvage that. We'll just make the wing a little bit less uh, prominent, so it'll be kind of hiding back there. We could glue the piece back on, try and find it, but uh, eh, it's just not worth it. We'll have to call an audible and make the wings a little bit smaller, which is okay. He's a big boy with tiny wings though. I'm a little uh, worried about the physics of this carving. But there's a great example of why you uh, want to have your hands out of the direction of the blade when you're carving, right? I'm lucky I didn't cut myself. Uh, my hand kind of caught it and, uh, and didn't end up uh, catching the, the wrong side of it. So anyway. Coming in, we got some shorter wings now. Let's try this again. I'm gonna cut these down, and maybe it's just the angle of his body that they're just kind of peeking out. This is again, this is how carving goes. Just kind of roll with the punches sometimes. All right, let's carve those wings in again. Just little notches, little indications of the feathers coming out. And it, you know, it would help to probably draw them in so that you know what you're going for here. And we'll do another layer here. Okay, like so. So we got the separation between. And we can come in and emphasize that a little bit more. Like so. Using a V-cut. If you have a V-tool, you could really just run the V-tool up here. Make your life a lot easier. Alright. Very good. And we got our feather uh, wing back. <laughs> of course, we had to fight for it. I'm going to do a second tier of feathers. And uh, by that I mean I'm just going to come in again with another stop cut, like the one that I created uh, around the body. And I'm just creating the uh, second tier of feathers, if you will. All right, so again, I've started to uh, establish kind of the tiers of the feathers by making these little U cuts. Coming in with the knife and just making a little U and a U, and then cutting it in like so. And we'll stop cut here. Okay, so make the feather lengths 
coming in, separating them out. I'm going to come over, since we're in this area already, this vicinity, um, I'm going to establish the uh, ear. Let's just deal with the head a little bit, get some shape in. All right, so the uh, ear is going to come in. We're going to come just above the ear and create a little bit of a stop or be cut. Just a little bit of a turn of the tool to create that ear. Just like so. And then we'll come under the ear here. Just getting the outline of it. Just removing a little material, a little scoop out of either side. Like so. We're going to let his hair come around his ear. So we, want, we don't want to remove too much from around his ear. And the other side, do the same thing. Scoop around on either side here. Okay, just get a little bit of definition. You want to try to keep them even as possible. It's hard to do sometimes though, and don't be too hard on yourself if one's a little higher than the other, as I've done here. <laughs> All right. Very good. So we've kind of indicated them. It doesn't matter that they're not totally detailed or anything, but we at least kind of know where they're at with these little bumps here and here. All right, moving on. Let's take the hairline down. Uh, I'm going to extend the hairline over here, like so, and wrapping it around. So a little bit of a half circle here. Let's see if I can uh, get a little bit closer to the uh, carving, so you can hear the carving, not just me talking. Just, uh, you can see, just coming around, defining the hairline, like so. And then, uh, gonna round his little baby face. <laughs> and take the point off of his hair, and the hard edges as well, off of his head. Like so, you can see that. I'm gonna connect the jaw to his, uh, well, well, it's separated, I guess, really, from his body. So I'm coming around like so. Again, Cupid kind of has this uh, big head and this tiny little body in these cartoons, and uh, that's kind of what we're going for. So there it is. All right, so I'll make a little stop cut. We talked about the stop cut over here that came around to find his body and his butt, and his butt, and uh, we're going to do the same thing here to his arms. So we're going to have his arm kind of coming out from behind his body. And so we're going to do a little separation between the body and his uh, arm. So we can just go ahead, make our stop cut like so. I'm curving the tool as I pull it through, right? And then removing a little material and just taking my time going through to do that. Turn it upside down might help. So it's a stop cut straight in and then a relief cut coming in. The opposite way, not the opposite way, but towards that cut. Like so, stop, relief, stop. Sometimes you need a second stop cut if the uh, initial stop cut is uh, not uh, kind of doing enough to free the ch the chunk of wood. All right, I'm gonna come beneath his arm here, like so. So what is that, uh, about three inches from the top of his head down, making an indication of where the bottom of his arm will be. And we got the other arm over here, so uh, we can start to kind of play with that, make that come out. So I'm going to come down from the bottom of his arm here, let's 
see, that's uh, about two and a half inches from the top of his head. I'm making an angled cut of his, kind of his wrist. Because back here we kind of already defined uh, part of the back of his body. That is really kind of going to be his arm. And uh, kind of round this out a little bit, take the corner out of this uh, little body here. So, continue to kind of round his face. Like so. Okay carve the uh, hand. I'm just going to keep it super simple. Just a little uh, just a little kind of balled up fist here. Hey, say just about uh, hmm, an inch or so. Inch and a quarter from the, uh, from the back of his elbow to the tip of his hand right here. So we'll just draw a little circle for his hand and the bottom of it and then it curves up like so. Like that. The idea. So we'll come in, define that arm like so. Define this one, this uh, wrist. Come up, cut both of those chunks out. If it doesn't come out, remember, repeat your stop cut. It's probably just not a complete stop cut. And then the chip should come out like that. Just kind of rounding that body and that uh, head down. All right, so talk about the bottom of the wrist. We'll just kind of define that as well. And uh, just come around the outline that we drew, just going in with the stop cut around the outline. Again, you can see I'm using the my non-dominant hand to my thumb on my non-dominant hand to kind of guide the knife, help control it, make sure it's going in as it's going around tracing the shape. And just coming through, it's like cut a little bit of that off, it's okay. Just coming around. I can make the body uh, indication a little deeper so we get some nice roundness there. A plump little round baby body, right? Like so. Okay. Okay, now let's uh, deal with the uh, little uh, leg here. So his leg's going to come up and kind of around the, you know, right just behind the hand. And it's going to curve back like so. It's kind of uh, the line of his leg, his thigh, comes around into his short little stubby feet. Like so. So then I'll cut that out. You can see what that looks like. Okay. Very good. This is kind of one part relief carving. 
and another part wood carving in the round or whittle meaning that you can kind of see parts of things you know the hand the feathers of his wing but uh, they're not quite uh, you know fully represented in the round so I'm not detailing the back side this is just going to be something that you could sit on a table sit on a, a wall against a wall and a mantle and look really nice okay so we got his little baby body <laughs> coming in through here just separating that out and we can also kind of decide that the arm uh, is going to come out like so as well and just define the bottom of his arm doesn't have to be detailed just yet. And we'll keep it pretty simple for the most part. Just coming down. Okay. Good. Next, I'm going to take the uh, his bottom. And I'm going to turn that, see the cut here, or the cut, the uh, drawing. Let me darken that up a little bit. There's his leg and his little foot down here. And his other little foot's going to be back here. Okay, you see those two little knockers, little suckers back there? Two little kickers, I mean. Knockers. Oh boy, I didn't mean to say that. Um, I think that means something else. All right. These are his kickers. Okay. Like so. Coming in. Again, same kind of deal as before. We're just coming in and uh, establishing the outline of our little drawing. And if you don't feel comfortable drawing, gosh, I hardly do. But if you really don't feel comfortable drawing, you can use um, the image that I'm pulling from here as a reference guide. And, uh, you know, do a little sketch of it. As long as you're not using it as a, you know, a you're not selling it. It's just something that you're using. Uh, it's someone else's design. It's not. It's not mine. But uh, you can feel free to uh, click that in the description again. As I said, and use that as a go by or a drawing. You could just really just sketch it right on your piece. I'm going to take a little bit from underneath the body. Body's a little bit big. He's a baby, right? So he's got a little tiny little body. So I'm going to make that a little bit smaller. Okay, there we go. Now I'm going to uh, define the bottom of his foot here. And this foot's going to be sitting back behind this one. So I will make a little shallow kind of stop cut, separating this front leg from his back one. So coming in, stop, and you got your relief cut. I'm just repeating that a couple of times. Reestablishing the bottom of that back leg. And we can also uh, take the uh, this back leg and cut the outline out. So we're doing a stop cut here from the side. Knife is facing this direction. And we're leaving it out. Just like so. Alright.
Okay. All right. Making some uh, some progress on this guy. <laughs> He's coming along. All right. I'm gonna start to kind of round uh, the planes of his arm. Just take the saw marks out. Like so. And just, uh, again, continue to take the saw marks out from the bandsaw. You can see those little lines. Let's see if you can. There you go. These little lines here. Just uh, taking those out and just kind of rounding out the, uh, the legs a little. And just clean things up as I notice. Like right here, we've got a little area that could use a triangle cut. So boom. Boom. Take that out. All right, so uh, I'm gonna do a little bit more cleaning off camera, but before I do that, I wanted to kind of mirror the shape of this arm because you can see here that uh, kind of narrows as it comes toward the hand. We got a big chunk of a piece of wood here, so I'm gonna work on making that hand a little bit more narrow as it comes down. So I'm gonna take a little scoop out of here just to thin down the wrist and leave a little. The reason I'm scooping is because I want the hand to be wider then the wrist, of course. So I'm gonna leave kind of a bit of a ball here. All right. Okay. And just kind of come on the other side and narrow that from underneath as well. All right, that's looking pretty good. And just narrow it a little bit more. And I can kind of round it out a bit. All right, so as I said, I'm gonna get off camera here in just a moment as I'm finished with uh, shaping up this hand. All right, and uh, be right back. All right, so I'm just about done kind of cleaning up the saw marks. And you know, in doing so, I'm also kind of rounding the legs and getting their kind of shape in. And it gives me the opportunity to uh, work on kind of narrowing the legs as they meet the feet, kind of the ankles, like so. Just kind of coming in. And fixing them up. Okay. And again, just taking the saw marks off of everything. Okay, and uh, again, just trying to clean it up. That looks much better. Same thing down here with the feet. Kind of taking the drawings off. All right, and round the body a little bit more. I want to take the round the body just down a little bit. And of course, in doing that, I have to go around and cut around the hands and make sure that everything is 
clean when I do remove some of that body. I want to make sure that the hands are taken down properly as well or not being taken down if I don't want them to. So that stop cut helps to prevent me to split things that I don't want to split. I'll just come under the neck and trim it up. Okay. All right, so it's at this point, I want to give him a cute little chin. So I'm going to take a little bit away from the center line. And speaking of which, let's draw that on there. Let's do a little, uh, a little line. All right, that's our center line. We're going to have some nice big eyes coming down here, kind of cartoon eyes. And his little, little button nose here, cute little nose. And his uh, little uh, kissy face, because <laughs> he is, uh, after all, Cupid. So... All right, so I'm gonna take his hairline up just a little bit, just like so, and uh, not too square. We don't want it to be too much of like a 50-year-old adult male hair haircut. And let's try to give him a little curl. So I'm gonna come in to find the first curl. It's this big kind of center one. I'm gonna have uh, curly hair. Cupid tends to have curly hair in a lot of the little illustrations that they do of him. Not sure why. Maybe uh, I don't know. Is it a, what is the origin of Cupid? Hey Google, what is the history of Cupid? On the website museumhack.com, they say Cupid is quite literally the child of the goddess of love, Venus. In Greek mythology, oh, he go. is known as Eros, and depending on the source, was thought to be a primordial god who came into the world either asexually, from an egg, or the son of Aphrodite. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. To find out okay. more, look for the link in your Google Home or Google Assistant app. There you go. So Greek, there he is. there's the curly hair. <laughs> I wondered, I didn't want to say... I should know more about my Greek history, but uh, alas, there it is. Okay, so I'm just coming through. Stop cut here where the ear is, and uh, actually kind of a V cut of sorts. I'm kind of laying the tools flat, and then coming up to the face. And I can define the cheek a little bit more here. Clean stuff up a bit. Even the wings could be taken back a little. Feathers kind of coming through. I have that second wing back there. This is going to be a hint of it, this top feather. So we can push this one back a little bit more. All right, so I'm here to tell you that uh, there's nothing wrong with a simple little project like this. There's nothing wrong with just kicking back and doing a little little project that doesn't involve your whole brain and you know, this will challenge you. It's challenging me, honestly. I was a little afraid of carving this. So I'm not trying to uh, belittle the, uh, the difficulty of it, but I guess I mean to say, you know, there's a lot of pressure from artists in the world of art to make stuff that's super, you know, new or revolutionary. And I think sometimes you can just take a break and enjoy yourself. <laughs> I don't think you always have to make something that, uh, you know, looks like no one else has ever done it before or... Uh, you just kind of have fun with it. So, I don't know, those are my thoughts at least for what for what they're worth. I'm going to split these little feathers down here in half, make them a little bit smaller. And it does require a little patience to do a project like this. I'm moving really quickly because I want to get this done before you guys fall asleep, but uh, it's okay. All right, I'm with you. We're good. We got this. All right, so we're getting those feather shapes in. And the idea is just to make sure it looks slightly. The tips are kind of rounded or slightly, ever so slightly pointed, kind of like that. Okay, he's got his little wings. All right, let's uh shrink his body up yet, again, even a little bit more. I know that seems a little funny to do, but I want him to have a tiny little body. So I'm going to come in. So, there. 
can see that. Okay, better. Okay, starting to take shape here. I'm going to shorten this hand a little. It's a little long. There. All right. Very good. So now I'm going to uh, kind of round his face a little bit more. Which, yes, that means taking off those pencil marks that I made, those nice pencil marks. But that's all right. Got his little hair in the front, his little curl. We can do another little curl. And just do a couple of them. Little indications of his curly hair. His little scoop cuts. Like so. Giving him a little V cuts here and there, kind of keeping him a little bit randomized, not too perfectly proportional, just to make the silhouette of his head a little bit more uh, bumpy. So you can see I'm just coming in, cutting little grooves and cuts, trying to make that hair a little bit more sporadic, not as uniform. And don't worry about symmetry here, actually, opposite. If you can try to make the cuts random, that looks better. See, they're just kind of random cuts everywhere. Right. Okay, so let's uh, round this baby face out. Come along the sides of the head. Take the arm down a little. Okay, just 
tucking everything under his body a little bit more. Let's take his, shrink his chest up just a little bit. I don't want it to look too manly just yet. I don't want his chest to poof out too much, make him look like he has a, I don't know, something awry. Okay, he's getting there. A little guy. Okay. Our young man is coming along. One quick thing I forgot to mention, um, my wing, which is a little sad looking to be honest, uh, one thing that you can do um, to kind of make it look more like a wing or like feathers, and I forgot to mention this earlier, is tear the, the feathers. So in other words, you start up at the top with the highest one, and then each feather comes below that one. So you can make a stop cut, cut it down, and then work your way. Another stop cut, cut that one below it, another stop cut. You just take your time tucking each under the next so they're kind of layered looking. That's a really nice uh, effect. We'll actually make it look more like a, a feathered wing instead of just a bunch of uh, feathers sticking out from his back, right? That they're set in one another is important. Okay, that's that. Glad I didn't forget to say that. I would have been beat. Excuse me, beating myself up. So, all right. And just coming in, setting the feathers in. Okay. Come on, the little chip doesn't want to come free. There you go. I guess the one downside to using the skewed blade is it does uh, tend to be a little challenging if you don't rock the blade to get a clean stop cut at the tip of the blade because it's a little bit rounded. Okay, we'll worry about that later, but for the time being, it gets the job done. You can tell what's happening back there. All right. belly down a little bit. Now I think it's funny in this particular drawing design they actually uh, put a diaper on him. <laughs> which I think does a good job of conveying that this is a baby. So uh, not a lot of room here for diaper but uh, let's just draw it on and see what, what you think. So the diaper would kind of come over here and then yeah probably just just under here. So this would be the diaper part, under here, and then under here. So let's do it. Just going to come in with a knife. Not too deep. And then just stop cut to that line.
All right, next we'll catch the underwear. Okay. And of course we're gonna cut the top part down to the underwear because the underwear sits on top of his belly. So, you can see that. Let's make sure we're in focus. Like so. So there's his underwear. <laughs> I like that. That's pretty good. And that'll look better if we get a little paint in there as well. So I'm going to shrink his leg up just a little bit, pick it underneath there. Yeah. Okay. All right. Making some nice progress on him. Let's contrast uh, a little bit more depth into the background here. Okay, now let's uh, let's start dealing with the face here a little bit. I'm gonna round the face out just a little bit more to that hairline. Let some of these little curls come down and make that the edge of the hair kind of come up and around like so to the curl. Like that. Very good. Now I am uh, going to do a, a bit of paint on his face, um, but I will do a little bit of carving to indicate parts of his eyes and such. So let's kind of decide on that. We're going to go with a nice low positioning on the eye, just because he is a baby and he's a cartoon. So he's going to have these big, dark lashes, closed eyes. So we'll go kind of straight in with a plunge cut to get that effect. Something like that. His eyebrows will be up here. All right. And I'll just look at that, see what I think of it. Not bad. Not bad. Mm -hmm. I'm going to work this a little bit more. All right, so uh, I decided to shorten up the chin. I just made the jawline come up, just took a little bit away from the bottom of the chin. 
maybe uh, uh, an eighth of an inch or less, maybe even just a sixteenth. And I like the shape of that better. And uh, I'm going to redraw the lines in. Okay, and he's got his little mouth here. That's cute. That works. I'm not too worried about it being perfect. Okay, and uh, nice. Okay. Now, uh, there's a surprise coming for this uh, particular project. I mentioned it in the intro, and uh, I haven't alluded to it yet, but uh, you'll see in just a bit. Okay. I'm going to come in with my knife and just come in the line of the eye, like so. Following the line, the straight end, the same thing here. Okay, and then I'll come in under that line with a little bit of an angle right underneath. Take a little sliver out, just like that. Okay, just like that. Then I'll come above his nose, following that line again, like so. And I'll take a little bit above it this time so that the nose stands out. And I can very easily just come in with my knife, create a little indication of the mouth here by spinning it around. It's kind of got a open mouth, a little bit of a, almost like, not quite a kissy face, but open mouth on him. Okay, I'm not going to get too carried away here because we're going to use a little paint in just a while. But before we do that, I'm going to talk about our surprise here. We just got his little eyelids showing there. I can come in and do a little scoop around, make his eyelids stand out just a little bit more. So I'm just above the eye, practicing that scoop. Okay, that's like it. Alright. Cool. He's an ugly little baby, isn't he? <laughs> I like him. And the goal here is to get everything nice and round, not to worry too much about detail. Maybe a touch of a little line here and there. You could just paint the face though if you wanted to. Completely. Avoid your stress.
I'm taking that hairline back like so. And the same thing here. A little stop cut at the base of the jaw. I'm turning that jaw into that hairline. Like so. Okay, I do a little cleaning up, and uh, we're pretty close to being ready uh, for paint. And what would Cupid be without a bow? <laughs> That's the surprise. <laughs> All right, so let's draw it out. I'm gonna have it have a little curve come up, and then it's gonna come up again. And God knows what type of bow this is, but it's a bow. Yeah, I'll make it a little smaller. It's a little, it's a little long. I'm going to say two inches. Okay, so center line is here. So we're going to have our little dip here. And then it's going to come out and then forward. Obviously, I'm no expert in drawing bows here, but uh, come out and then forward. Let's see. Well, if it's going to be have a string on it, I want it to kind of kick back a little bit more. So let's do that. Ends. Make it look like it's bending. All right, drawing doesn't have to be exact, but uh, we'll do that. <clears throat> so first thing, I'm going to split the piece of wood, just a thin, thin piece of bar, uh, of uh, basswood, probably oh, an eighth inch thick. It doesn't have to be thick. And I'm just going to come around, make the outline. to the base here so I have something to uh, carve against. And Spinning. Like so now I'll just come in and take the edges off of this and kind of whittle it down to a uniform and uh, not so square shape. Be careful on a small piece like this so you don't cut yourself. All right, so we've got our bow, and uh, I want to put uh, it in his hand in such a way. Uh, so that it holds on to it, of course. So I'm going to carve a little cup out, and I'm also going to carve some of this base away because the base seems to be getting in the way of the bow. So I'll do that as well. Okay. And our arm broke off, so I have to do a little glue repair. It shouldn't take too long. Might as well use it as a moment to show you what I do. In this case, when I'm carving a little whittle, I'll just throw a little super glue on there because that makes quick work of it. It's a small break. If it's a larger break, I'll actually use a combination of uh, a little bit of wood glue on the inside of the break 
and then the super glue at the outside to hold it in place so I can get back to carving quickly. But in this case, uh, just a little glue will do. And I've got some accelerator. I have this linked in the description below as well if you're interested in trying it out. It just makes uh, quicker work of the drying process and allows you to kind of get back to carving quicker. So it's pretty nice. And like that, I can already uh, kind of get back to carving. of leaving something of a base here, which I didn't expect or plan on doing it initially, but I uh, kind of like the idea of it now. So I'm going to have his bow hand kind of grabbing onto it here, which means I'm going to create a little curve to accept the bow, like that, I'm just coming in. see how that works. Might have to carve a little bit more of the base out for it to receive. Yeah, just a bit more. I've got a thin piece of string. I'm just going to put a little glue. Uh, I got it wrapped around the uh, top of the bow. I'm gonna accelerate it. And I'm going to grab the, our little uh, character here and put the bow in his hands, like so. Alright, and uh, let's see. There it is. Got it in his hands properly here. And I'm going to glue that in place as well. So again, I just carved a little cup for his hand to kind of receive the bow. I'm going to put a drop of super glue in there. And just try and get it fit in. like that. Maybe I can need to take a little bit more super glue to it. Oh, let's just try this and see how it holds up. Okay, seems pretty good. All right. And now I want to uh, put this loop through his hand and then back to the bottom of the bow, like so. So you can see that the string grabs the bow and uh, let's make this go up a little taller here. Cool. Right, so I'm just going to uh, make a little spot for his hand to grab onto here. The, uh, for it to grab onto the string. a little undercut under here to make it so that the uh, string can go under the hand and of course we don't need the hand to be that wide he's got baby his baby hands can narrow it up a little bit like so and then I will take the string 
just a little bit of glue not a ton because we don't really need a lot here a little tiny bit of glue put the string taut against his hand hold it in place like so and try and keep it fairly taut and then accelerate very good and if it's a little loose there you can put another little dab over top it to hold it in place just a touch right, and then we'll accelerate it again and then we'll come in and wrap the string around feed it through scrub It'll be easier to do with our knife that string around for a little glue and the uh, end here like so pull it tight against that glue a little accelerant that's it for just a moment and we can cut off the excess string like so Pull that off, and we've got our bow and arrow. Let's clean this up a little bit. There's a lot of fuzz happening here. Put a little more glue on the end here. Get that nice and tight. All right. Okay, so we've got the, uh, the general idea, we've got our bow, we've got our little cupid head, and let's get some paint on him. Aha, we cannot forget the bow. So we've got a uh, couple of scraps laying around on the ground. I'm sure one of these will be bow worthy. There's one, this will work. This is that piece that we used to create the actual uh, bow. Sorry, I kept saying bow, I mean arrow. We're gonna make that arrow. Alright. Okay, let's check our length here. That seems about right. And we can do the little cliche thing of making the arrow a little heart. How about that? Let's do it. I'm just forming a little heart at the tip there. Slimming that shaft, arrow shaft down.
Okay. Little arrow, little heart. Cute. Let's put that on his uh, bow. Under here. And we'll put a little groove in his hand to receive it. In between his fingers. At least to make it so that it sits in that groove nicely. Alright. Do that. I'm going to take a little bit more out of his belly just to receive that arrow. Let's see if that works. Nice. Perfect. All right. I'll glue that in place. Okay, very good. And uh, now it's really time for paint. That's right. Clean up the fuzzies in here, my goodness. <laughs> I'm going to go on a fuzzy cleaning spree before I get to paint. See you in a moment. All right, so I've uh, sealed the carving um, using a, uh, a Minwax uh, polycrylic. I've also got that linked below. It's just a spray. And I've just started to begin the, the process of painting it. Uh, I didn't get too far just yet, but I'll tell you what I have here on the board. I've got a, uh, a, a red, a green, a white, and a blue. And I've taken a bit of the red, taken it uh, to the edge of that uh, um, arrow head, the heart, to emphasize that heart. And uh, and then I've just come underneath the uh, cheeks just a little bit of pink there just to uh, kind of make them a little bit more lively. And uh, now I'm going to clean my brush off and I'm going to use a tiny bit of blue mixed with white to create a, um, a bluish white tone for the uh, wings just to contrast the white diaper so it's not quite as pure white as that. All right, and uh, give them kind of an angelic tone. Not too much blue. I want to get lots of white in there. All right. And then thin it out sufficiently. I don't want to have too much pigment in there so that it looks solid. I want it to look kind of nice and uh, subtle, like you can see the grain through it. You can see here I did a light wash of white on the uh, diaper. And uh, again, that's a thin down titanium white. So I'm just going through with the white. And if you have a towel nearby, you can actually towel off any excess paint that you get on there. Okay. So, I'll just take my uh, microfiber cloth I have nearby. Paper towel would work great. And just dab off the excess. You see how that kind of pulls the grain out of the wood? It kind of has an antique look. Very nice. You can take just a tiny bit of more blue, just to the tips. Again, I'm basing it off of the illustration that I'll tag here in the video. Just a little bit of blue there. I like the way that looks, kind of an angelic look. And I'll promptly uh, take my towel and just very gently dab off any excess. And uh, that clear coat really helps if uh, I miss an area and I hit the wrong spot. It's very easy to repair that because I can just uh, add a little bit of uh, water to it and uh, thin it out and, and wipe away the dirt. I'm going to add a little uh, red and green together to make some brown and uh, create a little hair. I'm going to actually add a little yellow to this as well. Oh, that was a lot. The yellow came out quickly, didn't it? Alright, that's better. I'm just trying to make a hair color for him. 
little curly hair. Even throw a little black in there just to darken it up. Because he is Greek after all, so he's going to have some dark hair. I'll grab that later. Just create a nice thin hair color. That looks pretty good. Just a thin wash is all we're going for here. And we're going to avoid the ear. Now the ear we kind of very uh, vaguely defined. Uh, you could go back in and create your the inside of your ear, come in with a gouge and kind of hollow out the ears. Uh, there we go. But uh, I, again, I was just trying to get a very basic uh, indication of the ears in. Not super worried about detail on this guy, just in general. I'm not as worried about detail. I got the ear. <laughs> and that's okay. Remember I said the clear coat will definitely protect us here. I can just take the See how I just wiped that off with the towel? Almost as if the accident never happened. And uh, can go around, create a little bit more of a contrast around the ear, like so. Just cleaning up around it, getting a little brown on there. And that's looking good. He's got his kind of curly, messy hair. I can take the cloth again, dab off any excess. And there you go. You could really get carried away with this. You could uh, carve the base into all sorts of cleverness, I'm sure. Uh, but uh, we're just going to keep this pretty simple. Uh, I'm going to do a little eyebrows, a little high set eyebrows here. And then I'll do another one here. You could draw them on first if you're nervous about them not being appropriately proportioned. To me, it's not the end of the world if they're not perfect. We're just trying to get some general indication of the eyebrows, like so. And a little line for the eyes themselves, kind of sharpen that up with a little bit of black and some paint. Trying to make it almost like consistency of ink. Okay. And come in with the eyes like so. Just really underscore those. Give them those eyelashes. All right. And uh, we've got a little thick with that. We can always thin it out. Try again, wipe it off, and try again. It likes to grab onto the uh, interior kind of uh, cut that we made, which is not a bad thing, actually. It'll make for like a nice, thin, precise eyelid. So we might, in fact, just take a little wash to it and see if it doesn't just sit in the line that we made. Like so, yeah. A little bit of uh, cleaning up from a little mess that we made earlier. All right. And then if we overclean, like I just did, a little bit more of that brown. And just re, re paint it in. And we can't forget about the nose. I'm actually going to use a felt tipped uh, fine liner pen uh, to just kind of draw a little cute nose, a little button nose, like so. With the little nostrils. <laughs> okay, that's the idea. And then a little mouth here. I might use a little touch of red on the inside there to get them. Kind of lips right at this area here, like that. There he is. Okay, now it's done. <laughs> Thanks again for watching, guys. Hope you enjoyed and got something from it. Ah, uh, yes, and if you'd like to see projects that are geared towards uh, wood carving, specifically more on the realistic face, so nothing like this face, uh, you know, something with uh, full dimension and detail. This is a uh, more crafty folk arty. Uh, but uh, if you're looking to expand your kind of uh, your fine art or interpretation of the realistic face in wood through carving, uh, check out the online school. It's a great resource. And uh, you can see as I'm talking, these projects are scrolling by. 
and uh, a lot there. I think over 70 plus videos now. So check that out in the link below.